Hi, my name is Celeste and I'm a blacksmith. So in this video I'm going to be forging out the pieces for a stair rail. In the previous video I took measurements and made a template and in my next video I'm going to be doing the welding and putting the finish on my work. So this is the fun one. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here I am at the crucible. This is where I work. And I'm heading over to the horizontal bandsaw to cut some stair rail pickets. I'm going to be cutting these at a 50 degree angle. Um, so I start by changing the angle of the bandsaw. And then I'm cutting these half inch pickets. And then I have this little protractor that you see right there. And I can use that protractor to check and make sure that the angle is indeed 50 degrees. So I'm in the grinding room right now uh, using the bench sander um, and I never wear gloves on this machine. If I wear gloves um, they can get caught down in, in the little channel between the sanding disc and the table and it can drag my hand down in with it. So um, no gloves in here. And I'm back in the smithy to forge out the stereo. I have this 10 foot long piece of rail here. And if you look, um, suspended from the ceiling from an I-beam, there is a hoist. Um, so I use this hoist here, this chains that you see, um, to help me hold this 10 foot long piece of rail. Um, because if I had to uh, hold this while forging it, um, that's a lot of leverage on the back end um, to try to control. So this way I don't have to worry about that. It holds it up for me. I use my foot, the foot pedal here on the power hammer. This is the Aang Ying. It's an 88 pound power hammer or somewhere about that. Um, and I'm going to start by trying to taper the end of this rail. So I have to flatten it first because there is a, a channel in it. And then I taper out the end so I'm making the end get gradually smaller as it gets towards that tip. So I'm going to be making two rails. I'm going to be making a handrail on one side of the stairs that's uh, 12 feet long. And then I am making a uh, stair rail for, for five steps. Um, so this is for the stair rail. Um, and I had decided that it would be really cool if I forged the scroll directly on the end of the stair rail. Um, and that was a big mistake because it was really pretty difficult to forge a scroll on the end of a 10 foot piece of rail. So I struggled with that a lot and I had a lot of help. And then I switched to three foot lengths of rail, which you'll see. Um, to make the scrolls, which I will weld on later. This is the fly press. Um, so when I tapered that out, I had to flatten out the rail, and now I'm forging a channel back into it. I made this top die here that you see. It's a top die. It's um, kind of V-shaped and it has a big curve in it and I'm using it to press that curve, the channel back into the rail and then I used um, a couple of other tools to reforge um, the end of the rail so it matched the rest of the rail. And now I am bending against a scroll jig. So I, I start by quenching that tip so it's cold and doesn't move. And then I use about 2300 degrees of heat and wrap it around this jig here. You can also use a torch, rather large torch if you're going to be doing this, but you can use a torch to heat up the rail as you go along. Um, and that way you get a more precise heat. You only heat up exactly where you need to bend. But this actually, it worked fairly easily. It went pretty quickly. I'm just leveraging it around. And 
and there you have a nice pretty scroll. Make sure you bolt down your vise if you're going to do this. Okay, so there's two decorative panels that are um, going to be part of the stair rail and I'm going to be using the Nasel 2B to forge them out. Um, this generates about 1,250 pounds of force. It's a beautiful machine. I love this machine. It's my favorite machine in the shop um, and probably the favorite machine I've ever used actually. And again, I'm using the foot pedal um, to control how far down it hits. So when I'm tapering on the edge here, you see I'm hitting lower and lower as I get towards that tip. I've heard the Nasel um, called the Mercedes of power hammers because it's just so smooth and such a great machine to use. Every time I put this in the forge, um, it forms a la layer of scale. That's that black stuff that you see falling off of the uh, steel. It's iron oxide, basically it's rust. Um, and every time I put it in the forge, it bonds with the oxygen in the forge. And it cools down very quickly on the surface of the metal and you see it falling off every time I hit it with a hammer. The nasal can not only generate quite a lot of force and, and make short work of a one inch piece of steel, but it can also hit really, really lightly if you need it to. Um, I've been told if, if you can control it well enough that you can pack a pack of cigarettes on this machine and I completely believe that it's true. Most of the technique um, that you see here I learned from watching uh, Toby Hickman's Power Hammer videos. Um, he was a great blacksmith and really amazing at the Power Hammer and if you want to learn the Power Hammer, if you want to learn techniques about the Power Hammer, I really recommend that you buy some of his videos. I love this machine. So this is the round back flatter. Every time I hit, you saw just a little tiny step um, get created. And so this smooths out all of those steps and puts them all into one nice flat line. Now I'm curving the flat pieces of metal um, using just a hammer and I'm curving it against the horn or the bick. I'm going to be using a different method to do this as well. I scrape off this layer of scale every time before I put it back into the forge. And then I'm bending it at a 90, degree to, 90 degrees to the outside edge. So you can't tell, but I'm at a little bit of an angle across the horn here. And then I've got to straighten it back out pretty much every time because I'm a blacksmith. So I'm bending metal and that means I'll often bend the metal out of plane. So it's, it becomes very, very important to be able to see straight and to get your metal straight again. So here I am back at the fly press. I'm using a round die and pushing the metal between two points of contact to create a very controlled curve. I do it cold because it can be done cold and I don't get scale on my piece when it's cold. Now I am bending yet another scroll, but this time using flat stock. So I'm bending it the hard way. So I have a piece of flat stock and I'm bending it on edge. Um, and when I bend, um, the inside edge compresses and the outside edge stretches. And because of this, um, it wants to curve. So. Um, it takes quite a bit of work to try and get this to bend correctly and I actually switched over to using the propane torch to be able to do this well. Um, after that, it's 
all a bunch of grinding. Um, so grinding cleans up everything that you did wrong, basically. You see this machine a lot in movies. You see it in Battlestar Galactica. They used it a lot. Um, it's an angle grinder. It creates a lot of sparks um, and people really, really like seeing it. It's a really pretty machine to see being used. And it's also one of the most boring things you can do with metalworking. Um, and I will be doing this for hours um, when I'm working on this piece. So I'm using an angle grinder with a grinding wheel attachment. Um, I also use a die grinder, a pneumatic die grinder. Um, and then uh, just a flat file to clean up anything that um, you know I didn't get with, with the die grinder. And I'm sanding it down um, to be nice and smooth on that inside edge. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, you can check out my previous video where I make a template and I am going to be posting one more video where I am going to be doing the welding and finishing of the rails. So uh, please check it out. Thanks.